morning. Welcome to Daily Devotion. I'm Pastor Krieger. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Uh, today we're on uh, Psalm 29. Um, it can be summed up by uh, what we find at the end of verse 9. This, uh, this, these words, um, in his temple all cry glory. That's what the whole psalm is about. Now, there, there are a couple of things that we can point out about this psalm before actually reading it. Um, first is something that's pointed out by by a guy named Franz Dalich. He was a German theologian. He wrote a huge and, and influential commentary in the Old Testament. And he highlighted that this psalm, it begins with this section that's basically saying glory to God in the highest. And it ends with, with uh, these words that basically are peace to men on earth. And of course, that reminds us of, of the angel's message to the shepherds when Jesus was born. But not to connect this psalm specifically with with the incarnation or christmas more to just connect it to the the broader theme of the entire bible god's power and majesty are over all things and he uses his power to bless his people with peace and so in psalm 29 this this point is driven home to us with this artful poetic description of god's power as a storm and and it's implied never stated uh, directly, uh, but implied that this is a rebuke of the false god Baal. The nations around Israel worshipped Baal uh, and attributed to him power to control rain and, and storms, and so their worship of him was, to them, necessary for their prosperity in their lives. Uh, they believed that if Baal was displeased with them, he would withhold rain, that then their crops wouldn't grow and they would starve. But this song, this prayer doesn't leave any room for that, for worship of other gods, because the Lord has all power. Now, when we when we read it, it actually refers to a couple of geographical locations. It'll be a little more meaningful if I uh, offer some context uh, to those. First, it, it will mention uh, Lebanon. That's the region to the north of Israel. One of the things it was known for was Mount Hermon, which is the highest mountain in the area. And uh, Syrian and Lebanon are are other um, some other names that are that are sometimes used as uh, synonyms uh, for Mount Hermon. Um, and uh, later in the psalm, we'll read about the desert of Kadesh, which comes up a couple of times in Old Testament history. Uh, it's in the northern part of the Sinai wilderness. This is to the south of Israel. So the point is something like when we say things like from sea to shining sea to refer to all of the United States. It's, the point is that the Lord's power covers the extremes all the way from one end of Israel to the other. And you also know some connections to the previous Psalms that we've studied, uh, where David had written about temple worship and and like the, the torture he was feeling at being away from the Lord's house, his desire to be back there. Uh, and now we've got this song of praise rising up from the temple. So this is sort of a conclusion of this, this uh, section of, of Psalms. So let's read it. This is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forests bare, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. 
The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. So the strength that's ascribed to the Lord in the first verses, at the end, it's given to the Lord's people. So after this violent storm passes, all that's left is God's power and peace. And despite the destructive uh, power of of God's voice, his people don't need to fear it because he uses it uh, to to, uh, solve our greatest problems, to fulfill our greatest needs. And isn't that just a... A really cool thought that that the voice of the Lord does all these things. It it thunders over the water. It breaks mighty trees. It smashes them to pieces. It strikes like lightning. It twists oaks and strips the barks off entire forests. But what did that voice do for you when you heard it? It called you. It invited you. It, It placed faith in your heart that you could actually trust him, that you could hear that voice and love to hear it. To believe that this incredible power that can bring to nothing even the the greatest earthly power we can think of, that that power isn't against you. It's for you. That's what God's voice is for us. We have access to his voice, his words. We have them recorded for us in the Bible. It's, It's a storm that has the power to destroy and the power to tear down. But for those who believe it, It has the power to build us up. It has the power to bring us to him. It has the power to forgive our sins. Uh, And 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 so so it leads us to cry out to him in worship and to give him all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.